Right, hello. I'm hello. Sam. I'm Danny. Uh, welcome to our new quest of, of, of the old Laughs on Tap, and we are now Nonsense Nature. Um, yeah. We're basically, we're changing up a little bit this time. Um, I think we want to focus a bit more on nature, seeing something we both love. Um, and he, a, lot of, a lot of nonsense. And a lot of nonsense, because that's uh, what, who doesn't love that? Um, we're going to talk, um, yeah, the whole idea of this podcast is basically to be focusing on small holdings. Uh, Danny's got his own small holding. It's complete mess. So our hey. thought is, yeah, yeah. Um, that's how it it's is. meant to be. Uh, well, we'll talk a little bit about it today. So today we're going to be talking about um, the five different mm. ideas, I guess, for any small holding that doesn't really know what to do with it. Maybe it's getting wasted. Um, and then we'll go through five different ideas. So sort of we'll do a bit of a ranking maybe at the end. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and shorten these episodes as well, uh, and hopefully less nonsense than normal, but, uh, maybe still a little bit just to keep us on our toes. Um, so should we crack into it? Yeah, why not? So, right. Our, our first idea, uh, organic farming. Okay. Um, now this is quite a standard agricultural, uh, term, basically just sow your field, uh, is, you know, make it, um, Focus on growing crops and don't use pesticides and, and fertilizers. Although I know you've said uh, about the whole idea that actually even in our waters now is is pesticides just from the amount that we've used as a, uh, as a society. Um, but things that you probably want to get up together with is soil testing to make sure you're testing the pH of your um, soil, if it's any good or not. Uh, you then obviously have uh, what type of crops you want to grow uh, with the pH soil you've got. Um, I'd suggest obviously different types. There's some things, for example, potatoes and stuff. I mean, you can literally just go to the shop and buy some old potatoes, um, use some of them. And if they ever get a bit uh, rotten, I know some of my uni mates know that I always just keep them till the bitter end. I know when, when I was at uh, uni, I literally had like stalks coming out of them, like a good oh, half look, a meter high. They look like that in my cupboard now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those sort of ones that you probably won't eat anymore, uh, chuck them in a field and, uh, hopefully you get a load more for the next year. Also, what you don't, what, yeah, but what you don't, with a, with a, a shooting spud, potato, um, you can always, if they're, if they're a sizable one, you can always cut them down, uh, split them in half, or cut them in half, uh, making sure you've got, you've got a, a, a sprout on each piece and each one of those will grow. And, and give you double the amount. So you can, you, you, in actual fact, you can, you could cut that if you had a big potato with um, various sprouts on. Uh, you can then, you can slice them in edge, as many pieces as you want. It's it, it's difficult and a lot of hard work as well. Heck of a yeah. lot of hard work. So these are some of the pros and cons. So the benefits of it, obviously, it gives you the produce. But it's I I'd argue out of all the lists today, it's probably one of the hardest ones because. Yeah. Firstly, yeah. as we know, farming as an industry is getting a lot harder with climate change, things like that. Um, just even, you know, the amount of, I know you've told stories in the past, but we can get into that on a different episode. Um, but right now we'll just crack through some of these. But um, yeah, if you want to hear more in-depth sort of specific crops and things like that, let us know. Um, but yeah, with this one, pros, look, it gives you a great produce. Uh, it saves you some money on going shopping and things like that, especially in the seasons mm. that you grow in downsides it's a lot of effort to maintain and also a lot of effort to actually plant in the first place and also will depend on your actual field itself i mean it depends on yeah. the size that you got and things absolutely, like that absolutely absolutely um right should we move on to the second one because we've uh only got so much time we want to keep these shorter um but yeah agro tourism now i didn't know that this was the the, the term to use but uh, we have talked about this before um now this is basically the idea of you create um almost like a petting zoo um i think it's a great idea um as long as potentially i mean you can invite preschools primary schools up and they can go and sort of say hello to the animals personally i think this is less effort than organic farming it's still a lot of effort um especially with the sort of manure and stuff like that you got to work with but um 
I personally think it's less effort than organic farming because feeding is the main probably thing. I think also you 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 personally get more enjoyment out of it because you're involved with the animals. That's if you're an animal person, of course. Yeah. It's um. Uh, but yeah, you do get a lot of enjoyment yourself as well as the people uh, that hopefully would come and and have a look and and play with the animals. Just be be um, natural uh, and. I mean, I've had Cooney Cooney pigs at home, uh, and they are so lovely. They are the loveliest creatures on this earth. So how often did they escape the actual? Pig? Well, they are little monkeys, right? Well, I say monkeys, no, they're still pigs. Yeah. Uh, but they, I must admit, I had Winnie and Rosie, and uh, uh, Rosie was a little, oh, she, she did, she, nothing would keep her in. She was a little, little tank, absolute tank. Now, whereas Winnie, bless her, her sister, um, she would only go and follow if, if she fancied it. Uh, but they did actually, most of the people in the village knew, knew Winnie and Rosie, although they didn't necessarily know exactly where they came from, but they did know her. <laughs> the police knew them as well, very well. But, they were on the uh, roads every part of the night. Like they that. were gorgeous, I, honestly, they were. But anyway, yeah. So there are some really lovely animals out there that... Uh, you will actually get so much pleasure out of. I had so much pleasure out of them. And my sheep, of course, I, there's so much pleasure out of them. But the, uh, yeah, the, it's, it is a way of possibly, earn, um, yeah, earning a bit of income. You're never going to get uh, Fortune, wealthy on yeah. it, but um, it's better than, I my, my, my small holding, which is uh, just about under two acres now, because uh, I sort of built on just like, under two acres, just, probably, uh, not a hundred. But the um, it, it 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 can be a problem. It, it, the biggest problem is if you've got nothing there to eat the grass mm -hmm. off. Uh, it's a problem because it's a bit too small, really, and especially if you've got it sectioned off as I have. Uh, it's a bit too small to get flipping machinery in there uh, for getting hay and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and but what I've done um, is that all right to say this. Um, is it, what I've done is I've uh, I've got a local uh, person who's brilliant with the kids and that down the school and that, and he does a forest club, and it, within all that, uh, he's got a bit of land by the pub, and he um, uh, he's got animals and that there, most of the sheep. He's got the herdwick sheep, and at the moment I've got six herdwick sheep in uh, use in the paddock and and they they're just rotated all the way around you just keep it down a bit so they don't get all that rubbish so, undergrowth and in so natural natural uh lawn mowers basically yeah, is, is a good yeah, way of yeah sort of describing it and you can control them as well because as, as they they control them by by they're in they're in um they're not roaming all over the place yeah they're in yeah, electric fence fenced off. sections and, so, and so should we go over that so the benefits then of this is obviously you get I personally think it's more satisfaction personally because yeah. I, I think animals are great. Yeah. Arguably, it's probably a bit more um, maybe veterinary bills and stuff like that. I, I would have thought there's probably higher costs associated to it potentially, um, although maybe less um, of your own work all the time. Bit of a mix. I mean, that's very much a, a, a view. I think there's probably different views for that. Um, but obviously, the um, they are high maintenance to keep up and obviously you've yeah. got to you've got to manage people if they're yeah. coming in and out of your property to make sure obviously nothing goes wrong um but yeah there's some real benefits for those um let's move on to wildlife sanctuaries this is probably commonly known as wilding um it's quite a big thing nowadays i, I seem to read a lot about it yeah. um but yeah with, with wilding you can literally get any wild seeds any wild uh, plants Definitely. or trees um and yeah. you know plant them plant them about i i mean this could kind of be tied in a bit with an orchard sort of style of uh, which i know we've we've been talking about today yeah. uh potentially a future cider uh opportunity so if you want to hear about cider making uh stay stay in tune uh for that um but yeah i, I think it's quite a good way to basically allow other animals in the, 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 i find that with well, where i am again it, it depends where you are I have a, a new, relatively new anyway, housing estate, only a small one, about 14, 15 houses, um, right along one of my boundaries. And um, to be honest, I would 
it is difficult because I I don't have a cat. Um, I have a dog. I have my 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 Meg, and um, she's bad enough. But <laughs> the cats are horrendous, and uh, if you're close to houses, I would say rewilding. Well, you're just feeding the cats. Well, you're not feeding them, are you? Because they they're not hungry. But, um, so it, it, cats, is, to me, is the biggest, biggest problem in in the countryside. But um, you try and tell a cat owner that. Oh, no, my cat ne- never, ne- oh, no, 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 it never goes out. No, it never kills. Well, I no. mean, a house cat arguably so, wouldn't go out, so. There are a few house cats, yeah. I'm sure, that don't go out. But um, no, the majority are killers, as simple as that, which not a problem. The only problem is it's just too many of them, and I've probably got about twenty uh, within 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 two hundred yards. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's sort of something to be careful of then, with, yeah, with very the much so. biodiversity of like trying to create a conservation sort of area. I think it's a great opportunity, but also we do have to be careful that we're not inviting vermin yeah. and stuff in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, foxes is probably another thing, but. Having said that, that's not the end of the world because there's very few of them left. Uh, yeah. But um, but yeah, so I think welding is a great opportunity. I think it depends on where you are. Um, Wonderful thing to do. Yeah, but and, and also it's no maintenance cost really. It's yeah. just chucking stuff out. So that's one yeah. thing that I think is really important yeah. to notice. If you're somebody who really is just like, I can't really be bothered to maintain it all, uh, chucking a load of seeds in a field is not that difficult. Um, and obviously it gives it back a bit to nature. Um yeah, so, so and potentially you could even create a little mini forest if you want to plant certain things. Yeah. Um, that might need a bit more care. Yeah. But um, but having said that, still not that much, and you get to see your your your, your trees grow as as you grow. Yeah. Which I, I must admit, I quite like the idea of. I know we've got a cherry tree in in our garden that's been there for about fifteen twenty years now, and it's it's very much uh, bloomed, which is great. Although all the pigeons get the get the cherries before they we do. do. They uh, do stupid things. Um, right, let's move on to the next one, um, is community gardening. Now, mm. again, we've talked about this before with uh, yeah. me and Grampy, but um, creating like uh, allotments is quite yeah. a big thing now. I know Adam, who's our cousin, uh, sorry, uh, my uncle, your, uh, your son, My son. <laughs> there we are. Uh, he um, he has his own allotment. So if you're in a city area that you have a bit of space, yeah, right, so. that's something that's really good. Yeah. Opportunity. Firstly, you get rent for those allotments. Secondly, you don't have to maintain the allotments because that's the job of the person that's renting it. Um, and obviously you might sort of be, I guess if you're a people person, you get to go there and explore the whole time. Um, and I think that's a great opportunity yeah. personally. Um so yeah, I think that's that's something that we definitely need to consider. It, it, I agree. Uh, community wise is, is again is brilliant, yeah, because it gives them opportunities to enjoy things. Uh, but the the but don't I I would say don't look at it as a money spinner. Um, but no, it, uh, it, it it's a it's more of well I'm going to say a charitable thing to the community really. It's and a bit of a side hustle. Uh, you, you, but you, do, you do get some. You get your money for your water. Uh, whether you make profit on that, I'm not sure, but yes, you you make sure you do. Um, but and the actual rent, I've looked at other other uh, rented places, and that, and it is certainly not a money spinner, mm. but it does do very good, and it looks after your ground as well, which is really lovely. Yeah. So, so I think again, that's probably slightly higher maintenance costs than wilding because obviously you've got to build the actual allotment pieces. Yeah, you've, got to you've, got to, it. you've also got to market them as well. So that's another thing to consider. Um, but I do think that's a really cool opportunity if you like people. Yeah. Um, if if you've got enough space that you don't really know what to do with, but you'd like it to be used. Yeah. Um, but you probably do have to spend a bit in order to make it. And then obviously with that, there's a lot of composting options. I'm quite an avid, I I, I don't do it yet because I don't really own a garden, but I do that, love the idea of composting. And, and that's the thing with all of this really is the quality of that ground. If, if whether you're growing or what, it, it, whether you're growing for vegetables or flowers, come to that, um, or growing for animals, the grass, is is the basis of what's in the ground mm. uh, it's um i mean i i'm a firm believer in the proper proper old dung uh, it, um 
but farmers nowadays of course uh, they do tend to use a lot of their a lot of their dome. well they always have done but um and there's it's if you can get a farmer uh that's got dung around uh, manure sorry i suppose uh, um well. then that's the stuff to get it really is horse manure is fine but it needs to be well aged uh as as uh a cow cow dung does hmm. but um it, it, it's it's much well, yeah much it's brown gold is, is yeah. what they refer to nowadays. It's yeah. uh, it's quite an expensive thing manure, yeah. isn't it, to get um, hold of? Otherwise, you're you're down to your uh, your own compost and stuff like that, which is great, but mm. it takes a long time to yeah. uh, collect enough of that. Uh, you could, of course, ask uh, neighbours for all their all their uh, cuttings, uh, yeah, all their bits and pieces, and put into compost. But, uh, I don't know how yeah. legally that is, right? Because everything's got to be got a legal twist to it nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot of always planning permission for a lot of this stuff, which is oh, actually go, that's going to lead into our next one. So yeah. renewable energy sites is one that I think is something that probably will be given more planning permission as we go forward. Um, wind farms and solar farms. If you've got sort of an acre or, or well, probably more like two is probably when it starts to get viable. Um, but again, planning permission is the main thing um, to sort of get hold of. I know with the houses near you, let's be honest, if yeah. you start putting uh, solar panels out, they're going to be I, uh, told off immediately. They'll uh, be up in arms. They're up, they're up in arms and everything. Yeah, if you can avoid getting neighbours, just avoid it altogether. <laughs> Because neighbours are nothing. Well, I'm sorry, but well, you can have some lovely neighbours, uh, by the way. We have oh, some oh well, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about next door neighbours and stuff like that. Uh, no, these are new houses, really, because they usually come in from the from the towns and whatnot, and they really haven't got a clue uh, uh, what goes on the other side of the fence. And uh, I have had huge troubles, problems. It's which, constant. Yeah. Which we won't get into today because no, we'll I think we'll, that. Uh, we'll, we'll, but, but we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the things to do. The small holding, a small holding. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose we're talking about small, small holdings because a small holding is, is quite a broad term. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, you know, you could have mm-hmm. about, I don't know, 30 acres, uh, which is a lot of, lot of ground. Let's say the benefits then of renewable energy sites because that's what we're on. We're not yeah, talking sorry about, about uh, that. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the next rant to, to this one. This is where the nonsense comes in. Yeah, a bit of nonsense, Jake. Yeah, a bit of nonsense, uh, whatever it is. So, yeah, with renewable energy sites, I think the, the main things to sort of say about it is check your planning permission because those things are really important. Yeah. Um, but I think solar panels are great because also you can still have sheep and stuff around it or That's you can beauty. still wild it That's underneath. That's a Keep them up. Um, so keep it, up, keep it chick, elevated. Chickens. Could, same, yeah. same with the wind farms as well, though. Obviously, birds can be affected by yeah. it, but... Um, yeah. You know, if, if if you're quite in an open area, it's not it shouldn't affect it too much. Uh, now that can be for your own use or potentially sh- like, uh, plugged in straight to the power grid and then given back to it and potentially earn money off it. I don't know if there's any schemes going on recently, but um, yeah. yeah. So um, they're the top sort of I think five or six. I can't remember how we did now, um, yeah. but they're sort of the ideas we've come up with. If you've got any other ideas uh, on your uh, own or, or or other people's ideas, let us know in the comments um please sort of subscribe to the next next one we're gonna next time hopefully talk about butterflies um or potentially something else we're gonna this podcast is very much about small holdings or gardens i mean you know we've got plenty of space in our garden which is not that big to do small things like we're talking about today um so come along for the ride if you want to hear anything about wildlife um if you want to know what to do your small holding or potentially cider makings is something we'll talk about in the future (laughs) Um, but yeah so so let us know what you want us to do and we will probably see you next time unless you've got anything else to add great yeah great all right we'll see you soon all the best